On the road to Viridian City, I meet my friends along the way. Pokemon lore time. What's been said and done, Eclipse One. Uh, this time is Viridian City. Proton Mario made a video of uh, the Viridian City and Viridian Forest. How's my singing? Um, whatever. Uh, let's just give us a shot. I've done the first one, Palatown. Let's do all of them. Let's give us a shot. Why not? In three, two, one. I like Varian City. It's the last, it's the eighth gym badge, and and yeah, there's the forest, and it's close to the Leaf War. Continuing our lore series, we're going to be going through routes one and two, which are directly connected to Viridian City. While we go through these routes, you can expect to find Pokemon like got that a badge and the power to play. Often. Rattata happened to live wherever it can find food, which it searches for. They're everywhere. Day. And thanks to its sharp fangs, it's able to eat nearly anything. When it feels threatened, Rattata can deliver a powerful bite, even though this Rattata and Raticate in this series actually don't learn the move bite. Its large teeth are also useful when it uses its signature moves, Hyper Fang and Super Fang. Rattata laughed at Ash after stealing from him in the first episode, which was quite fun. It likes cheese, nuts, fruits, and berries. Yeah, but this isn't a forest. It's an open field. It also comes out into open fields to steal food from stupid travelers. That means uh, I'm stupid? <laughs> Pidgey are also a very common sight in these areas, along with the entirety of the game. Atkins is a natural predator for Pidgey. Pidgey was one of the first Pokemon Ash attempted to capture in the series by throwing his coat over it, and he failed doing so. Even though Ash captured Pidgeotto and had a Pidgeot, he never owned a Pidgey before releasing Pidgeot. After we finish Route 1, we arrive at Viridian City. Viridian's definition oh, that's right. is... He got a, Pidge a Pidgeotto and a Pidgeot, but never got a Pidgey. Hydrated chromium I never really noticed that. The Viridian Forest is also known for its bug types because the forest is so lush, it blocks out the sunlight. So Viridian City and Viridian Forest goes hand in hand. Spearow is a small flying normal type Pokemon that gains a flying type move called Peck, which unlike better Gust than in Gen 1 is super effective against bugs and fighting types. This is an effective Pokemon to capture for the Viridian Forest trip that we will be making shortly. Sparrow also prey for Ekans. This Pokemon happened to also be one that Ash threw a rock at in the beginning, causing it to attack Ash with a pack of Spearow later, and it almost killed both Ash and Pikachu. Both Nidoran male and female are great Pokemon to get early on, and they do evolve. I like Nidoran male. You can take into the end game, but oddly enough, they are the only Pokemon that are assigned genders in the original Pokemon. Gender was not introduced until Gen 2, and their final evolutions require a Moonstone, which is fairly rare. When we do encounter our rival, he will always have a Pidgey. And if you happen to win and beat him, you will get five free Pokeballs from Oak before you deliver the parcel, though. So if you want some free Pokeballs, make sure to do that beforehand. Again, he'll have a starter that's a little bit leveled up and Pidgey, so it shouldn't be that difficult of a fight. As we continue through Viridian City, there's an old man with coffee. Originally, he was just a drunk who had stumbled out there and passed out. This was changed due to the localization, and we must not forget the infamous missing no glitch that this gentleman mm -hmm. allowed us to perform. Get but unlimited we'll get uh, Master Balls. Late. It also should be noted that there's a potion on the little shrub next to the old man, so if you want to take the truck around, you can get that for absolutely free. The 8th gym leader is here, and the door is locked, so we will unfortunately have to come back for that later. And there's also a fat man who happens to be cut off by a water and bush. This guy gives you a TM later on, so again, this town does require several visits. The Pokemart will now sell Pokeballs if you didn't happen to get the five originally, and that's after we deliver the parcel to Oak. It would be a good idea to buy several antidotes along with a few Pokeballs. However, there are several items to be found in the forest for free if you'd rather go that route. And there are also Pokemon that can be caught in the city, but only by fishing later on, so we will have to return later for that once again. 
There are several other houses in Viridian City, but they don't much matter. They just give you a little bit of exposition on the game itself, and don't really do much. Viridian Forest, though. This forest contains four items, one Pokemon, That's from a guy two potions, I like their channel. and an antidote. If your Pokemon is poison, this is very useful. It would behoove you to capture a poison type just for this forest, as the poison types are immune to being poisoned. All of the Pokemon here can go up to level 7, and the trainers here are all bug catchers using bug types. Unless you are playing Yell, which they're slightly different. If you were able to get a Charmander as your starter, this part will be easy with Ember. But if not, going back and getting Sparrow will help you in this portion greatly. However, bug types will not really be a big problem. Poison types can be used to absorb the numerous poison stings from Weedle, and Viridian Forest represents the first major dungeon of the series. So, this is the first challenge to trainers, but it's an easy one because there's no other floors, and it's just a straight walkthrough. The bug catchers here help to grant good experience for trainers who pick Charmander. Each trainer has a few bugs that can easily be overcome even without a weakness. Regardless, Charmander's type bonus will be Ember. Regardless, Charmander's Ember, Squirtle's Water Gun, and Bulbasaur's Tackle will work fine here. Bulbasaur being a poison type, it is immune to the poison stings, making it highly resistant here in the forest. Other Pokemon like Rattata will work fine again. If you feel like reading <laughs> your own stuff. bug types as well, you can just do that here by grinding it out to level 10 and getting a Beedrill or a Butterfree. As we go through the forest, we can capture Pokemon like Caterpie and Metapod. Caterpie happens to be one of the weakest bug types in the game, evolving at level 7 and again at level 10 as Metapod. Caterpie parodies the typical Caterpillar in our world and was Ash's first captured Pokemon. Subsequently, Metapod was also the first evolved Pokemon he captured. In a later episode, Bugsy had a Metapod that was trained in the ability to move quickly, proving that Metapod could do more than just harden. However, it should be noted that Metapod would only be able to tackle if he was evolved. While Metapod here only use harden, it should be noted that depending on your version, you may or may not be able to capture these Pokemon easily. Weedle and Kakuna are other bug types that you can catch here. Weedle is a typical larva, but with a poison point atop its head, making it a deadly poison type. Weedle's coloration warns predators of its poison typing, and like Metapod, Kakuna can do nothing but harden, if caught in the wild, that is. Similar to Metapod, Kakuna can learn poisoning if evolved instead of caught in the wild, so it retains that move and gains the move harden later. Ash failed to catch Weedle, after being distracted in an early episode, which was quite funny. It should be noted, again, depending on your version, you may or may not be able to capture these two Pokemon easily. Now, Pikachu can be found in this forest. Pikachu has a massive amount of lore associated with it, therefore the bulk of it will be reserved for a Pokemon Yellow's lore video. Here, I will talk about how rare Pikachu is within the Viridian Forest itself, at a 5% catch rate for both red and blue, but that's still better than Pidgeotto, at 1% in Pokemon Yell. Searching hard enough, you can find the Pikachu, which would make the second elemental type that you can get, and a very good one to use against the second Gym Leaguer Misty later on. This is a great catch for now, but Pikachu can be captured easily later on in a power plant. This means that if you want to attempt the grind and capture this Pikachu, it would just be to get it early. Once we've finished the dungeon, we can exit out and we can leave to a wild area before reaching Pewter City, which contains the same Pokemon we faced before this point. And with that, Pewter City is the next area with a lot more lore than Viridian City and Viridian Forest contain. That'll do it for this episode of Pokemon Lore. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed the improvements I've made. It was and interesting. It was, I did enjoy myself. Which does have quite a bit more of lore associated. Makes you want to play the old games again. More unique characters and things to explore thanks to the museum that's there. Along with the trainer, we are going to be battling. And we'll probably be going to the next route and the next section, which would be Mount Moo. Which I will be covering extensively. I hope you guys truly did enjoy this. If you <sighs> did, you can leave me a like for some support. Let other people know I exist. And you can comment sure down below with your own lore entries. 
Did I miss something? Would you like to um, add to it? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. You can always support me on Patreon. Thanks to XD. my patrons for donating. I wanted to just let you guys you know, know that your donations do darkness. go to a good cause. Anytime I have a mic break or a headset break or anything necessary for me to edit these videos, they are instantly replaced thanks to the funds in Patreon. If you want to become a Patreon subscriber and see these videos a day early, you can go ahead and take the link in the description below. But other than that, you just watching here makes all the difference. I really wanted to thank you for the support on this new series, and I hope to see you back here in the next lore video. As always, good gaming, God bless, and thanks for watching. Oh cool, you did a review on Pokemon Masters, and there's the lore of Palatown, which I did too. Hang on a sec. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. This was enjoyable. Yeah, if you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments. I'll do more of these. I'm still a little sick from uh, last episode of doing this. Um, uh, but I'll do, I'll keep doing more. Just You gotta let me know in the comments what you want me to do. Because I can't do nothing if no one tells me to do something. That's kind of like who I am in real life. You gotta help me out. You know, there's Twitter. There's TikTok. Follow me. Know that, know that I'm around. Know that you're around. To be around people. More is coming soon. I play Pokemon Masters also on this channel. See you in the next one. Bye bye.